Hi everyone. So funnily enough, today is when I complete 10 years since I joined my computer science degree. I was an undergrad in 2014 May and today 1st of May 2024. I think I complete close to 10 years. I've learned a lot uh, through friends, family, peers, just me going through the internet and in this video I wanted to share that framework. I feel coding is a journey that takes at least 10 years for you to, you know, become comfortable with. Beyond a point it's an obsession if you're doing it for more than 10 years. Uh, I feel you know you'll probably keep doing it forever. Um so what is that? And what should you chase versus very fast outcomes? Should you be chasing fast outcomes? Yes, but you know, only for the short term. What should you be doing in the long term? What I did over the last 10 years which I feel served me well and created a core interest in computer science. other than the you know 100 other factors why you get into cs let's get right into the video point number 1 initial motivations can be anything you don't necessarily need to get into cs for core interests you can get in here because there's money to be made here and software engineers are paid handsomely and whatever gets you there is fine it could be a cs degree uh, if you're getting multiple choices maybe go for a cs degree in a weaker college than going for metallurgy in a better one if you weren't able to get into cs maybe go for a boot camp if you cannot afford a boot camp youtube has enough resources today for you to learn anything the point is get that first offer as soon as possible there are a lot of things to do after that but unless you reach that first offer and you become part of the ecosystem you'll always feel lost okay whether or not you're doing the right thing it's not like when a lot of people land into an iit to do computer science everyone knows cs very well a few people do and then that ecosystem sort of creates there's a hierarchy of seniors that are doing really well and then you know they pass it down unless you have these seniors or you know even someone you can talk to there's a very high probability you, you'll loan out very quickly so make sure you know you get into the ecosystem as early as possible even if you're less paid even if you it's through a haphazard manner of you know getting into a boot camp and making into at least one company the journey from there is significantly different but get that first scrappy offer and nothing to be ashamed of you don't need the most you know fanciest cs degree to get a job point number 2 long term faith in the industry um a lot of this video is going to be about core interest in computer science but for one point i want to talk about you know the ups and downs that happen is cs going to be a thing in a few years um you know is there any point of you learning it at all if you know this is a 10 year journey and you know god knows what will happen in 10 years and the answer here is just look at numbers uh, that's what i did uh, look at you know how we used to do 10 different things a few years ago how did we talk to other people how did we date how did we uh, order food or even have food how did we ask for directions there are a lot of products ingrained into the population now and you know maybe a certain part of the population a lot of people are slowly getting there um and this will only increase so you know the time that people are spending these days is not talking to a neighbor it's on their phone you know scrolling social media or on whatsapp and all of these are places through which you can extract value from and customer right um so for that reason i feel you know this industry will just keep on growing uh i don't know almost forever but you know if not this if you know phones go away something else comes somewhere or the other you know there'll there'll be some computer in our hands uh, slash you know in all around us uh, which will need some sort of programming uh, and you know there are a lot of legacy systems right now if you've ever seen you know an airline tv uh, so you know other than the fact that there will be more systems existing systems also you know need a lot of work so you know all in all i feel uh, there's no real point thinking if things are going up or down uh, so all in all my point here is uh, i don't think it's too hard to build long term conviction in tech it's like fairly easy to see okay you know our lives have been changing for a while and they'll probably keep on changing and at the epicenter of this will be you know software so if you're the one building it probably you know you'll be able to extract some value from the industry as time goes by so are there other better industries yes real estate is a great industry uh, you know manufacturing is a great industry so pick and choose um, but for sure this industry you know at least has a higher growth rate at the moment um, and probably that will be the case for a while um and number 2 you know personally for me um I, i'd rather spend my time you know on a machine which you know when i'm spending time on a machine i'm learning things that help me you know grow personally by personally i mean you know professionally i guess um but you know if i'm in real estate let's say you know all I, and i have to meet people that's my job that's probably also a skill to learn so you know basically figure out what what skill do you want to obtain because this is the thing you will be doing for years is that you know manufacturing or you know being in a factory or being in real estate all of these are great industries uh, and you know you'll probably make money either way doesn't matter find your core interest but if it is cs the industry probably isn't going anywhere with that superficial point out of the way let's get into the third point which is core cs interest this is the most important point throughout the video cs is a fairly new invention maybe 50 60 years ago is when you know people realized you can create computers and you know render them on screens and then since then 
today our lives are you know much more fancier with mobiles like these but you know this has been happening for a few years for us to reach here and this all happened because a few crazy people took a bunch of bets and you know thought okay we'll make computers smaller and smaller and everyone will have a computer in their hand eventually happened i've seen most of these people you know who are continuing to code for 10 years or are creating a dent in the industry by building you know products like these that are highly innovative sort of crazy over coding um, this is very similar to chess i've seen very similar obsession in chess recently okay you know the people who really like chess just like it they are not looking for an end outcome um they feel like it's a fascinating game and they want to spend their time voluntarily there people spend you know 10 15 hours at a stretch trying to play a game and there's no real you know outcome at the end of it it's just you know one person winning one person losing but they have core interest in the game um similarly people on the side um have core interest in just hacking uh be it you know hacking a website understanding how a product is made trying to get into the hardware of your machine i guess things like these um once you have this core interest everything else becomes like highly binary if anyone comes to you with you know a code base you at least have the curiosity to learn about it versus you know if you're the other person the other person being you know who quickly wants a job and you know quickly wants to learn the easiest stack or you know whatever is the stack that's being used in this company so i can fit into this puzzle and you know be here for a few years doing the same thing again and again there's a stark difference between both of them be the other one be the person who's hacking if you're hacking you know at some point if whatever company you're joining irrespective of the stack they're using it will be very easy for you to you know eventually catch up to it versus if you become the other person who's extremely sticky to a stack ki yaar nahi i joined my first company they thankfully taught me x and you know i've been doing x for years now because you know that's it was easy to just learn x and do the same thing again and again x you know can be anything node js let's say okay i went to into a company learned node js and then have been doing node js for so many years over there also i only know the specific stack okay i can only build http servers in express anything outside of that don't ask me if you're that person there's a high probability you know you're not going to stay in tech for 20 30 years or you know code for 10 30 years you might still stay in tech but this video is about people who want to stay for years and for that find core interest the best thing you can do and the only thing that you can take from this video is find core interest in computers as soon as possible for me did not happen for a long time i chose the most crappiest path i was probably highly imposter syndrome driven at iits because you know at least in my college there were a lot of prodigies somehow i got into the right groups but i was always the dumbest one there um and you know core interest came much later for me i would say you know maybe 2 to 3 years after graduating the earlier you can find this the better point number 4 most people leave tech if there are 100 people you know taking a campus placement and going to various tech companies to code maybe 10 amongst them are coding in like 3 4 years the others might still be coding but they might be on the path of you know coding the same thing they found their team and you know are have fit themselves as a puzzle in the piece and they like doing the same thing again which is also fine there's not there's no downside to it um but you'll see you know this keeps on getting shrunk down um and the people who sort of stay for these 5 7 years were still coding learning changing teams to learn something new are the people who you know continue down this journey so you know figure out which side you're lying on and you know if it's not tech it could be anything i've seen people either become engineering managers which means you know they like managing people there is a ceil- easy ceiling here compared to you know if you're still coding uh, by ceiling i mean you know ceiling to how much you can make but you know you can decide to value work life balance beyond a point and it's great work life balance if you're an em um you only have to you know manage people from time to time you know don't have to strain your eyes because tech is anyways you know very weird industry when it comes to health so it's not bad a lot of my friends have seen go back to brick and mortar businesses that their families had which is also great i think these are better paths becoming an em or you know going back to your own business or trying some third thing being a singer comedian the fourth path is you became a cog in the wheel you literally became an ai who learned something once and is not training anymore just you know applying the same thing again and again why is that bad hakirat um because you feel like you're still a developer at least on paper but you're effectively doing the same things again and again right and if you teach a monkey how to code the same thing and you know do the same thing again and again at some point they learn and this takes me to the next and uh, super interesting point which is be an ai that's constantly training for years at least for the first 10 to 20 years try as many stacks as possible maybe at least three to four stacks try to get good at uh, in like a span of 10 years um, of course in your initial few years general advice is just stick to one and go deep in it eventually you know if it's been 8 10 years you should be comfortable in you know various kind of stacks a high level programming language python java a lower level language c c++ language that lets you build uis be it you know kotlin java swift the thing is if teams do become lean which you know seems like it's happening um this will be a valuable skill to you know jump into a company and help them out in everything be it the front end back end devops but more than that this is also a sign of you know curiosity 
कि आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वट एक्स्ट्रा डज यू नो लो लेवल प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज है यू नो वाई आर यू आई इंटरफेस इन एंड्रॉइड बिल्ट इन कॉटलेन और जावा and then maybe in a few years there's a new language that comes you should get very comfortable switching to it i'm not saying you have to you know keep spending your time switching from one stack to another i'm saying you should be very comfortable if you've been coding for 10 15 years now to learn a new stack very quickly and you know understand what it's doing because effectively every language is doing the same thing there's memory under the hood you're trying to put things there you're trying to take out things there you're trying to execute lines of code there's nothing new there's just every language is a different way to achieve something on a hardware so if you understand that well the language in the end doesn't matter as long as you understand how and why the language was written the way it was written next up either learn or teach there's no in the middle if you have a crew that you've found make sure in that crew either you're the one who's teaching something new or you are learning something new don't be stuck in the three co-workers who are in the same team working on the same thing that's not technical growth uh, that's just you know being in a bubble step out of the bubble and the best way to do it is you know find people with various interests for example one in, in front end one in back end one in native app development that way from time to time you're learning a lot of new things and if not learning you're teaching a lot of things which you know number one cements your own concepts number two is how the industry grows most smart developers came out of small engineering groups so find that crew it doesn't have to be the fanciest if you can you know if you're in a company find that rockstar in your company try to get close to them this is an underrated way to increase the slope of your learning curve and eventually you know become really good at coding next up i'll start with an example on this one most startups that are started by you know two technical co-founders unless it's a very technical product that they are building fail and the reason for this is okay you know these people people who have been coding for a long time the people that you know were aiming to become through this video over engineer everything they have core interest in the industry right so if you start up most of the time you are spending your time on the wrong places you're trying to over engineer the product you're building the fanciest ui you're building the most you know you're not building the scrappiest product you're, you're not moving fast you're trying to build the right thing on day 0 which is why great advice if you're thinking of starting up is get a non technical co-founder get someone from the other side who you know does not like coding does not understand how to code or you know doesn't necessarily care about the doesn't care about the quality of the code or how fast is it running only care about business priorities it's a very bad recipe for you know two technical co-founders to join and you know keep over engineering a product when there's no one using it and this is a fairly common pattern in tech every techy you know if you go to google or facebook it's very easy for you to raise a seed round and and you know if you're all technical it's not your fault it's just you know what you like to do um and you know what you feel is right which is you know we're building it this way this is the most technically fascinating way to build this or you know this might be might not be needed but boy this is a lot of fun to build when that happens is when you know after two or three years you realize you don't have any users yet you have a beautiful product to so make sure you're not chasing a beautiful fancy extremely high tech product if you're starting up make sure you're coding scrappily make sure you have a non tech co-founder lastly uh, it's very easy to become extremely crazy in this industry and by crazy i mean you might be sitting on dinner table conversations and you know talking about null pointer exceptions which no one on the table understands or even cares about um, at least i have noticed this happen from time to time it's fine realize that 99.9% of the world doesn't even know what coding is and you know amongst the people who do maybe only 1% are actually interested in this as a dinner table conversation but find these people who like having these conversations on the dinner table be that person i don't think there's anything wrong in it um find peace in coding at least i've seen that happens to me now maybe it happens in anything if you do something for a really long time you know it becomes habitual and you know you feel very weird if you don't do it for you know more than a day personally for me if i don't code for a day i feel very weird if not coding i'm reading about something but most of the time i'm just coding um at this stage you know if if you keep doing this the right way for years um you're not doing this for any monetary reason tech is a field where anyways you know it's very easy to reach a ceiling there is a ceiling you will never be ultra rich being a tech employee most probably you might get lucky with stocks but you know there's a ceiling to cash comp even you know in the biggest companies out there so first make sure you don't have you know extreme plans of being a billionaire this might not be the best industry for that reason at least as an employee uh, as a founder sure you might that said no one could have predicted you know facebook would be this big there might be a next big thing and most probably if i'm guessing right you know it will happen in tech um, so when that happens you know if you're really skilled if you're this person you know who's coding for 10 years like this you'll be able to enter the industry because you know they will need developers doesn't matter if you're a developer in a different niche um today web3 needs like developers left right and center we in fact there's a saying right now or you know there's a very viral thread i'll post somewhere here where someone said i'd rather hire web2 people for my web3 company because web3 people are just busy you know looking at prices whereas a web2 engineer just came and is just here for you know core interests of computer science versus 
trying to make money or you know doesn't have a lot of crypto bags so it's not looking at the market all the time um so you know this will happen in every industry uh if you're a good engineer it doesn't matter if you were in a different niche if you're a full stack engineer in a bank you can very easily move to you know some company in crypto if you do the right things if you know you're a good engineer um and mm-hmm. you know from first principles in six months or so learn everything that's needed there that was all i had for this video there's one learning here be extremely curious about tech and it's a long journey even though you're trying to get that first offer as soon as possible eventually slow growth is what helps with that let's end it i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye it is when i complete 10 years since i joined my computer science degree at iit roorkee <laughs> i did hey hey chalo na do the sheher ek naya jahan muskurahte hain bikhri jahan se gham ka mausam gaya jahan meethi baatein har ek ajnabi se ho bhule hum bhi jo saari fikre lamha lamha khushiyan bikhre उधर और यहाँ वहाँ जाए वही दिल कहे जहाँ बेही बे बेही बे बेही बे क्यों ना कोई खेल जिसमें सब ही की हो जी इन दिनों भूल तारे कोई भी देखता नहीं देखे उनको दीवाने हो के कोई कितना भी हमको टोके खुली हवा हो खुला समा जागे हुए हो सब अरमा बेही बे बेही बे बेही बे, 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 बे